friends today we are going to study a bit more about specific heat capacity of a substance and also about molar specific heat capacity and what is the relation between specific heat capacity and molar specific heat capacity so first of all as we learned in the previous lecture that specific heat is given by C is equal to Q upon M delta T where Q is the heat added, amount of heat added. C, this is small c. M, mass of the substance and delta T is the change in temperature. So now, let's study what would be the specific heat under different conditions? So, first condition we have is at constant temperature. Constant temperature. So, if temperature is constant, that means no change is happening in the temperature. So there will not be any difference between final and initial temperature. So in that case our delta T will be 0. So the condition, first condition is if the substance undergoes the change of state at constant temperature, then what would happen to C? If substance undergoes the change of state, that state is changing because we are providing heat. So something will definitely happen to the substance. It might melt or anything can happen to it. But the condition is that whatever is happening, it is happening at constant temperature. There is no change in the temperature, though state may be changing. And we have seen this occurring when we have both ice and water at 0 degree Celsius. So in that case, both ice and the water near the ice melting, both show the temperature of 0 degree Celsius. But both the states are different. So if this is the case, then what would happen to C? Our C will be Q upon M into 0. So basically this is Q upon 0 and whenever 0 comes in the denominator, this is not defined, we call it infinity. So if the temperature is constant, then specific heat of substance will be infinite. So whether the substance is melting or boiling at constant temperature, in that case, its specific heat capacity will be the maximum, that means infinite. And now the second condition. Second condition is if the temperature of the substance changes without the transfer of heat. That means maybe the substance is melting or boiling something is happening, the substance is showing change in temperature, but there is no transfer of heat. If you are taking a thermos flask, so in that case we can say that transfer of heat is not possible. But still if cha some change is happening, if there is the change in temperature of substance, then what would happen to our specific heat capacity? So now we are saying that temperature is changing, so definitely there will be some finite value of delta T. But there is no transfer of heat. It means heat added is zero. Whenever we denote Q, we say it is either the heat added or heat taken away, taken out. You know, heat gained or lost. This is what our Q is. So if there is no exchange of heat, 
no transfer of heat taking place in that case our q will be zero so if our q is zero in that case what would happen this is zero upon m delta t and definitely it would be zero no matter whatever is there in the denominator if your numerator is zero that means everything will be zero so thus we can say that if the temperature is changing without the transfer of heat in that case the specific heat of substance is zero so again we can say the example goes here of a thermos thermos flask if there is some liquid in a thermos flask and you shake that flask so what would happen that because of shaking we are shaking the thermos flask so the liquid will shake and all the liquid molecules they will also vibrate they will also shake so their kinetic energy molecular kinetic energy would increase the collision might increase and whenever there is increase in kinetic energy though it is being done by it is it's being happening by shaking mechanical shaking even in that case there is some change in temperature so temperature usually increases whenever you give a good blow a good shake to anything to any substance so its molecules will shake and then they their kinetic energy would increase for sure so if there is a bit of increase in kinetic energy its temperature would definitely increase but now whatever is this happening there is no exchange of heat taking place it's all because the liquid is shaking that's why due to increased kinetic energy of the molecules the temperature has risen but being a thermos flask it is a double walled flask so no heat has been entered into the flask no heat has been entered because it is double walled thermos flask and no heat has been gone out so that's why here q is zero but of course delta t has changed so that's why here we would say the specific heat capacity of liquid in the thermos flask is zero this is very important that where the liquid is if here, here the same thing happens if liquid is there in the open vessel then we cannot say because then if you heat it or shake it then definitely heat will go into the surroundings and further third case is if to raise the temperature of any substance heat is being withdrawn if you have to take out the heat from that substance to bring that change in the temperature then what would happen to specific heat so now by sign convention in thermodynamic we use some sign conventions and according to that heat added heat added to a system is considered as positive and heat removed from a system is considered as negative so if in some situation we are saying that the change is happening change in temperature is taking place by removing the heat by taking the heat away so heat is being removed so in that case our q is negative so if our q is negative this implies this this is minus q m delta t and in that case it would be negative so if heat is being removed from the substance to bring the change in temperature then the specific heat capacity would be negative and the example of this is the specific heat capacity of saturated water vapors so to raise the temperature of saturated water vapors we have to remove the heat heat is withdrawn from them so that's why since heat is being withdrawn we have a negative sign in our formula 
and our C comes out to be negative. So in that case, specific heat capacity of saturated water vapors would be negative. Now let's discuss molar specific heat capacity. So now first we studied only specific heat capacity which is denoted by C. Small C. Lowercase alphabet C denotes specific heat capacity. Small C. And molar specific heat capacity is denoted by capital C. So in the previous lecture I have already told you the definition of specific heat capacity which is that specific heat capacity of a substance is defined as amount of heat required to raise the temperature of amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance through one degree Celsius. So Q required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance through one degree Celsius. This is the definition of specific heat capacity. So now how molar spe specific heat capacity is different from specific heat capacity? I am again going to say the definition now. So now molar specific heat capacity of a substance is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of substance through one degree Celsius. So everything is same. Again we need some heat, amount of heat required is the same thing of the substance but now specific heat capacity is to raise the temperature of one gram of substance whereas molar specific heat capacity is the heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of substance through one degree Celsius both will raise the temperature through one degree Celsius so the only difference is here we have one gram of substance and here we have one mole of substance. So we denote mole as mu. Okay. So number of moles is mu. Which is given by this mass of substance upon this molecular weight. So this is mass of substance. Which we were considering in specific heat capacity. But now this mass of substance, when we divide it by the molecular weight of substance, this gives us the number of moles. And we require molar specific heat capacity as the amount of heat to raise the temperature of one mole of substance through one degree Celsius. So now here, specific heat capacity denoted by small letter C and molar specific heat capacity by capital letter C. So small c, the formula goes like Q upon M delta T, amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of substance through 1 degree Celsius. And this molar specific heat capacity goes as amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 mole of substance through 1 degree Celsius. So the only difference is in the substance, the quantity of substance that we are taking. Here we are considering just 1 gram of substance and here we are considering 1 mole of substance. And how do we get the number of moles? Number of moles is given by mass of substance, whatever quantity of substance you already have divided by molecular weight. That gives us number of moles. Then we find for one mole. Now we have that our specific heat capacity is Q upon M delta T and molar specific heat capacity is Q upon mu delta T. Let this be our equation 1 and this be our 
equation 2. Further, let's define what is mu. So, mu is given by mass of the substance upon molecular weight. So, this is a equation 3. So, now let's substitute this value of mu in this. So, substitute 3 in 2. So, this implies that our molar specific heat capacity is given by Q upon M by capital M delta T mass upon molecular weight. So, this becomes Q M upon small m delta T. And now, we can further group this thing and keep capital M outside. And what is this? From 1, we can conclude that this is nothing but specific heat capacity. So, this implies that our molar specific heat capacity is specific heat capacity multiplied by molecular weight. So, this is the relation between molar specific heat capacity and specific heat capacity. So, all you have to do is specific heat capacity multiplied by molecular weight of the substance that would give you the molar specific heat capacity of that same substance. So, it's very easy. Easy to find out. You need not to find number of moles or anything. Just remember this expression. If you know the specific heat of the substance for 1 gram, so all you have to do is just multiply that value with the molecular weight of the substance and you will get the molar specific heat capacity of that substance. Now let's find the units of molar specific heat capacity. So again now, first I would like to mention the formula that specific heat capacity is Q upon m delta t and molar specific heat capacity is q upon mu delta t. If you remember the SI unit of specific heat capacity is joule per kg per degree celsius for delta t and cg's unit is calorie because CGS unit of heat is calorie, calorie per gram because CGS unit of mass is gram per degree Celsius. So now just watching this, how can we write the SI unit and CGS of molar specific heat capacity? So what is the difference in the formula of both the specific heat capacities? That here we have mass and here we have mole. So for mass in SI we use kg and in CGS we use gram. But for mole it stays the same. Both in SI and CGS we write the unit as mole itself. So here the SI unit becomes joule since Q is in the numerator per mole per degree Celsius and CGS because CGS unit of heat is calorie so here it becomes calorie per mole per degree Celsius so you just have to remember that when you write the unit then you have to write mole mol but otherwise when you define that mu is mole so we write mu is number of moles so the unit of moles is mol mole. So this is all for today. Thank you very much.